Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for an awesome conversation with two super people with superpowers about their super books. Uh, thank you, New York Comic Con, for having us. I am your host, Joe Whittemore, author of Supergirl Age of Atlantis, Supergirl Curse of the Ancients, and Supergirl Master of Illusion, all novels inspired by the hit TV show Friends. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> talking about Supergirl, and I would like to introduce you to two very delightful people with me here today. Melissa Benoist has at least 52 clones. That is the only way I can figure that she can be a, a wife, a mother, a writer, a director, an actress, a dancer, a, own her own production company, um, be a violence, domestic violence prevention advocate, a pet parent, an oxygen breather, all of the above, all these things. And honestly, the intro of the show should say, I am Melissa Benoist because she is a super girl. And now I'm gonna look down at my promo, the, the bio copy here, and just read from that. So Melissa Benoist is an American actress best known for her roles in Glee, Whiplash and the CW series Supergirl in which she plays the titular role. Supergirl is currently airing its sixth and final season. She is the author of Haven Secret, the first installment in The Powers, a new middle grade fantasy series about two sisters who must come to terms with their extraordinary powers. Co-written with her sister Jessica Benoist and New York Times bestselling author Mario, Mariko Tamaki, Haven Secret will be published on October 26th by Abrams Amulet. Tom Lennon, Thomas Lennon, uh, Mr. Mixy Spitalik, however he wants to be called, um, is funnier than should legally be allowed. Seriously, I think in the United States, the LPH is 55 laughs per hour, and you are far exceeding that, sir. You are quite a funny man. Just be cautious, especially in school zones. Seriously, um, when I was reading Ronan Boyle, I... It's one of those books that kind of is like Ted Lasso is a show where you kind of want to save it for a pick me up. <laughs> it makes you feel so good. It's just, it's, it's like the, the stories are delightful. You're such a funny guy. Um, and now I'm going to look back down at my copy. Thomas Lennon is a New York Times bestselling author and actor from Oak Park, Illinois. He has written and appeared in many film and television shows, including Reno 911, Night at the Museum, and Supergirl. He is the author of the Ronan Boyle book series, three middle grade books set in the world of law-breaking leprechauns that the Wall Street Journal calls extremely funny. The third and final book in the series, Ronan Boyle Into the Strange Place, will be published on November 16th by Abrams Amulet. Both of you, welcome, welcome, and thank you for joining me. Hello. Hi. Hi. Now, um, we're going to talk a little bit, of course, about Supergirl, because this is New York Comic Con, but oh. we're also going to talk about your books in the second half. So um, I want to start with Melissa. Um, like I said earlier, this is the final season, and I'm sure you've got all the feelings of relief, happiness, sadness. Uh, overwhelmingness of what's going to happen next um but how has this show like when you first started on the show you had certain expectations like oh I'm going to be a superhero and a, you know a role model for people and like how have your expectations like how has the show blown your mind with the way things have changed uh well first I'll say I don't think I realized truly realized what I was signing up for in the beginning <laughs> so those expectations were kind of my mind was blown right from the start um, just because I, I didn't really anticipate how big it would feel and like the responsibility of all that and, and what comes with playing a, a character like this. Um, and I think all my expectations were just, I guess it was good that I went in that way because I, I didn't, I was just living day to day um, and it was one of the hardest, most challenging experiences of my life and, and I think will remain. Uh, that way for the rest of my life um <laughs> and i'm so fresh out of it like we just finished in the beginning of august so i'm still sort of processing you know what it uh means and what for, to me and in in the grand scheme of my life and um right now just feeling a lot of gratitude the fact that it's over and that i experienced it and that i got to do it and um, you know, I'm sure I'll really miss wearing a cape for a living. Right. Um, um, what was your, what was your, the, your, the funnest part of it for you? And what was the most challenging part? I mean, uh, the most fun were the people, 
you know, I got to work with this yo-yo um, <laughs> who was such a joy and the people were the best. We got to meet so many amazing people. Like I got to work with Linda Carter and, and Callista was fantastic. Like every guest star we had on the show, every series regular on the show, I just loved the people and that was the best. And like, there were was, a lot of- the best? Who is the best guest star, though? Probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. But if there was uh, like, if one guest star stood out over the, I know you did six in uh, a long time. <laughs> Let me think. You know what? Uh, I want to. It's. It's. I, I would like to point out that I, I sent Melissa when I uh, finished this uh, last episode with her, the season six, a note because what she does on that show is so astonishingly hard. Mm. And she does it in such a chill way. Yeah, I mean, fine. it's really hard. If you see how the sausages are made of that show, it is so, it's the hardest thing you can do. I mean, I'm, it's just a giant movie no, with no, you know, twist. Basically, every, like, eight or nine days, yeah. you make an entire movie. And so, uh, I mean, she's, like, one of them, just, a, she's a true badass. He just wants really, me to say that I, he's my favorite. Well, no, I, we were building to that. I'm obviously the, your favorite. Guest <laughs> but I thought I'd, I thought I'd sort of like sprinkle the infield with oh, She's great, too. I mean, she's great. You know, <laughs> hey, funny guy. Okay, um, so, Tom, that actually leads me into a mm. question for you. Um, you mm. said this is such a hard thing to, you know, to work on. Mm. Um, so playing Mr. Mixes Spittle, like, first of all, can you say it backwards? I actually can't. Mm -hmm. I can't. In fact, I think when they. The one time I did say it backwards on the show, I asked them, could they just record me and flip it backwards? <laughs> if you're getting, if you want any indication of how lazy I am as an actor, I think that's how we, I think that's how we did that. Um, I actually wasn't positive how to say it until I heard Melissa say it. So I just say the way, the way she said. I don't know if I was ever positive about it either, because I feel like I well, was corrected are. after every take. Really? Yeah, and you it was always right like in. a minute difference, like mixes plicked. Like, you you right I never got it. You walked right into the first scene with me and you said, Mr. Mixes Fiddle. And I'm like, oh no. I'm like, A, she knows her lines, which is great because I've been on shows where that's not always true. And B, she knows how to say the names. I was like, I gotta, I gotta step it up. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> well, for you, we're gonna shorten it to Mixie, make it easy for you. Sure. Oh, that's better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but so normally in the comics, uh, Mixie is more of kind of like an impish, annoying mm. character. And you do play that well in spades. <laughs> but um you also added some great um like depth and and thoughtfulness to Mixie in this it wasn't just like hilarious boom 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 the entire time there was a lot of gravitas in this so and you do this for a lot of stuff like I, I also saw you in How I Met Your Mother and you were doing this kind of jump from talking about uh the thing that is almost the thing really long German word anyway but you jump from being Levin Flanker Schicksal shots I yes. that word. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> shots. yeah. How can you say that and not Mr. Mr. Spindlix? Anyway. Um, so how do you how do you do that? How do you jump from humor one second and then just jump into playing the straight man the next? I think, and that's a I think it's a thing that we've done in, you know on Reno 911 for a long time, certainly, which is you know, the the silly or something you're you're doing is you know for me the more sincere I get weirdly you know I mean I I like in the last episode with Melissa there's a, like there's a huge musical number that I do for some reason I'm not I still don't really know why I tell all the backstory in a song but it was fun to do but uh for me the the thing to do whenever I'm doing something silly is I get so I get as deadly serious as I can possibly be about it, you know? So that's, I think the difference between doing, you know, something sort of funny and over the top. Okay. And what you was the like yeah, yeah. step into the super world when you first, on your first day on set for you? Um, well, it's, it is, it's hard to step into a world like that where also everybody's, you step in and you're the only one who's not in like a spandex jumpsuit. <laughs> you know, and like some people have like weird, they're like, oh, they add my hands later, or there's always some <laughs> weird thing. And you're like, oh, right. And I'm like, how oh, this guy doesn't have a face, and you have, but you do have a face. And everybody's like, we're all okay. Um, I would say on some shows that would be tough, but on Supergirl, because it is such a great squad, 
Um, and I'm sure Melissa can get into detail about how they're all awful separately. But from my experience, they seem really great. Uh, so <laughs> it's a very supportive group. Um, or at least it was, it was very nice. It was pretty easy for me to step in. But that's why I think if you see me in season five, my hair is not as crazy. And then season six, exactly, the little, the little weird twisties. I was like, if I don't get a cape and I don't get a weird like cod piece or a jumpsuit or boots, I got to do something. <laughs> so, okay, very good. Yeah, but it's a very, it's an awfully supportive group. Uh, so, it's yeah. like a family, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's we're like, just well, a big like, slice yeah. of apple pie over there. That's awesome. Um, so, Melissa, what are you hoping that people will take away from the series as it draws to a conclusion? Uh, I, I really hope, I mean, uh, just based on the entire six years journey of the character for me, I, I really hope that it always and forever throughout the series, not just in the final seri uh, season, but just shows um, the fans and, and young women in particular uh, how to be true to themselves and to not be afraid to do that, not be afraid to speak up and really own your power and and empower the people that you love around you and um, really embrace community. That's awesome. And then um, what did you personally take away from the show? I mean, tangible, like physical stuff. <laughs> you to keep the costume. I can't tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did take a few wardrobe pieces. Um, you don't have, you gotta have one full rig, don't you? I mean, For I don't- emergencies. How, how do you not have one for emergencies? Yeah. There, there might be something locked away somewhere. Okay. Um, and I took a few things from sets. There were all these little dinosaur figurines around the cat coast set. And throughout the season, I would just kind of nick one here and there. Um, I didn't. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else I took that was tangible. So a lot of wardrobe. You got to keep one because... Melissa, every once in a while, you just throw it on and you walk Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> and you get that the thrill of a lifetime where people are like, she is very good. She Her cosplay. Very, wow. wow. <laughs> this one's great. <laughs> Plus, by the way, and you make a couple bucks and give it to charity, do whatever you want, but you make a couple bucks. I'll be really aggressive about it. Yeah. You'd be I'll like, give me a couple bucks. Yep. Mm -hmm. but, then, but then you have to insist that it's not really you. Because like that would be weird, yeah. Yeah, and I I think you know so, something like that, especially now that I have a kid. Mm -hmm. That's it, it's important stuff like that, mm -hmm. or else he won't believe me. <laughs> yeah, like, might not. Might not. No. Okay. So now we're gonna slightly segue into the book thing. Mm -hmm. um, for both of you, did your time on Supergirl inspire anything in your stories? I I mean, for me. It's kind of a, a major theme, just recurring thing in my life uh, of sisterhood and the importance of that, because uh, I grew up in a family of three sisters um, that our household sometimes, even, you know, after my parents divorced, every being in the house with four humans and three animals, there was only one male and it was the dog. So we had a lot of feminine energy growing up and I loved it. And uh, my sisters are two of the most important people in my life. And that really carried into it. It's so funny that Supergirl ended up being that way for me too. Um, all the women on the show I, I got so close with and uh, obviously all the relationships on the show between Kara and Lena and Kara and Alex and Kara and Nia, they, they all were so different and unique in their own right, but still like this common thread of sisterhood. And, and that's something that really carries through in uh, Hayden's Secret and the Power series. It's a book about two sisters and them kind of navigating their relationship along with these powers that they have. Okay, and so, so while we're on the subject of that, um, so Ellie and Parker are the sisters. Mm -hmm. And Ellie, and I'm not giving anything away because this is all, you guys can see this all on the cover copy and stuff. Um, Ellie's more intuitive and she can talk to animals. And Parker is more uh, telekinetic. She kind of can affect the earth. She can affect, she can kind of throw out flames kind of situation. And they both kind of inherited these powers from their mom. And she had passed away earlier and she left them. I love this, by the way. I love all of this and the world building everything. Um, but she had left them on their birthday. She would give them a little gift that 
I'm not going to give anything away, but might have tied into something important to do with their future. Um, so that's really clever. Like what inspired, like what inspired that for you? Like, did you come up with that? Did Jessica come up with that? You came up with that together? It was sort of this collective. And I mean, in terms of what we wanted the, their powers to look and feel like and, and the kind of world building of it all, it really stemmed from my sister and I's love and reverence for nature. And we really grew up um, our grandparents would take us on these long drives throughout Rocky Mountain National Park and, and Arches National Monument. And we really grew up with this love for the national parks around the country. And so we wanted their powers to really be involved with nature and for what they were fighting for to be surrounding the natural world. And um, we also grew up avid readers and I'm a massive bookworm and books like A Wrinkle in Time. And obviously I was like the perfect demographic for Harry Potter. I was eight when I was, I think I was an 11 year old reading the Sorcerer's Stone when Harry was 11. Um, but I, I, that too, we really wanted to kind of build this magical, fantastical world that we would have wanted to jump into when we were younger. And it, so is your sister Parker and your Ellie? <laughs> Actually, yeah, kind of. Okay. I didn't mean to do that, but sort of. <laughs> okay. And then what was it like collaborating with her? Like, did you just uh, text, like email each other How or on the phone? It was super collaborative and, and kind of any and all mediums. And, and she, Jessica, has from since I can remember, has written. And when we were kids, was always filling, you know, those like three hole punch memo spiral notebooks that you have to get for school she would fill them page cover to cover like tens of them um and each like little manuscript that she would write was five spiral notebooks so she's always written and she's written fantasy from since i can remember so uh working with her was really fun it was fun to be to kind of brainstorm and be creative with my sister which i haven't gotten to do in a long time that's great um tom so for your Ronan Boyle stuff, um, and for people who aren't familiar yet with the series, this is their first exposure to it. It has a very um, like Irish folklore base. And what made you like, you know, we talk about leprechauns, we talk about other uh, mythological creatures. What made you decide to pursue that? Is it because it's not done enough or? Well, uh, it, there are a couple sort of mythological books about Irish mythology, but I feel like, um, this one's a little bit different. It does, one of my, the, my favorite thing that the Ronan Boyle books do, which is they take you to the world of Irish mythology, but then they deal with it in an absolutely bureaucratic, like nuts and bolts way. <laughs> like, you know, like the most dangerous, unicorns are super dangerous because they have a point on their head and the point is designed to kill leprechauns. So there's details like that in the books that you find out about, which is why Ronan has to police the fairy folk and why there's a, a whole special unit, um, is because the mythical creatures in the Ronan Boyle books are legitimately dangerous. They're either legitimately dangerous or they'll just steal your stuff. Yeah. Um, so it, it takes, uh, basically, I, I wanted to do an Irish mythology book that, that didn't have sort of any, like, you know, that wasn't, didn't keep things too sacred, you know, that was like, an Irish mythology book that's not insanely funny isn't really an Irish mythology book because Irish <laughs> people are really funny. So it has to be, you know, it's sort of just, it fed into itself a little bit. Right. Um, but uh, I forgot the question. Oh, no, no, that, that was... <laughs> oh, great. Did I, did I accidentally answer it? Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so <laughs> of those like mythological creatures, what would surprise people? Because you may, of course, you may, I assume you made up a lot of stuff like the whale who like she eats you when they... Pfft, Oh, you, oh, that's that's book three. You actually read a little bit of book three. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Super secret book three. Yeah. Um, but, um, so mythological creatures, mm -hmm. some of them, obviously, like I assume you made that one up, but what is one that would surprise people that you didn't that's, make? That you, that's real. That's yeah, real. Exactly. Um, that's uh, that, a lot of the fun of the Rona Boy books was taking real Irish mythological creatures like uh, Cluricons, which are a slightly taller leprechaun. Hmm. And there's also a Gankanak. Some of them, I, and then what I would do is sometimes take the on paper attributes 
of these histor historical, real, mythological creatures, and then uh, expand on them. So uh, for like the Gankanak, which is another, a different type of leprechaun, they're so incredibly beautiful that if a human sees them or even hears them talking, you'll basically fall in love with them and give them like all your gold teeth or like your, like your wig, your feet, but you'll give them everything you have because you, they're so incredibly lovable. And then stuff like that. And also like if you get bit by uh, a harpy, which is a sort of a, a scary Irish uh, bird with a beak uh, in the Ronan Boyle books, if you get bit by a harpy, it gives you terrible ideas uh, that you think are great ideas. Like that you're gonna like open a record store and the, or you know, like that it's just like really weird ideas, like bad business ideas, bad creative ideas. So it was fun to take like, you know, and I think that's what everybody does when they write mythology is you take the rules a little bit and then just start building your Gosh. you know, yeah, just start putting your stuff on top of that, seeing what what the And now Ronan Boyle um is in production with DreamWorks, is that right? Are you super excited? It's been a really, the book world and Melissa, get ready because your book one is about to come out, right? Uh -huh. So the other day I was here and I have a, a recording booth and I was recording the last sentence of the last of the three Ronan Boyle novels, the audio book. So I started crying like a classic Aww. Irish type. Aww. I, I cried when I wrote it too. I don't know if it's because it's good or just because you start crying when you're done with the book. <laughs> But I, I started crying because I finished third audiobook of the Run of Oil books. And then I had to use the same microphone to record some wild lines as a weird little changeling for the, the DreamWorks movie, which is at the very beginning of its life. So it's just this weird, get ready. This, it's a long, long world, the, uh, the book world and the ups and downs. And you have tons of crying, so much crying. Um, if people want to stay after, that I'll just, okay. Well, if people want to stay after, I'll just I'll cry for you guys. And read you the end of the book. Start crying. I'll read the end of Melissa's book. Start crying. Crying. Um, but uh, yeah, so the uh, the movie uh, we're looking at, uh, and this is very 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 fast. Uh, Christmas twenty twenty four. That's awesome. Wow. Nice. And have you recorded all the voices? You need like super people to be extra characters for you. Entirely possible. <laughs> Entirely possible. I smell collab. Um, so what else are you guys working on? After, like, for you, uh, after the Run and Boil stuff is done, what will you be doing next? Oh, and Melissa, for um, you? I'm, getting more, uh, I'm always doing the same sort of thing, just writing stuff. Writing. I, most of my life now is Ronan movie, basically. So which okay. is a huge thing that takes forever. And... Uh, occupies all of your time. So what's Melissa doing? It's more interesting, maybe. I'm not doing anything right now. <laughs> and I'm really Great. fine with it. I'm like letting the dust settle. I'm being a mom. I have a one-year-old and that takes up a lot of time. Um, and I'm loving that. And I have my production company that I just started this year, which I'm, you know, learning the ropes and, and diving into that. But really I'm just being a person. Awesome. Okay. And your production company is three, three things, three things, three things. And what are the, can I ask what the three things? Yeah. Are? It's a Mary Oliver poem okay. uh, about breaking the rules. You should look it up. It's a good poem. I will. We should all look it up and then Tom can cry. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll go with the drop of a hat guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I'm going to ask you now to give, okay. I, maybe you have this in the industry. We call it elevator pitch, but mm. Um, for writing an elevator pitch is kind of just like if you were writing in an elevator with an agent or an editor and you wanted to tell them, you wanted to make them fall in love with your book as quick as possible. Um, so give me your elevator pitch for your books, kind of like the quick hook that makes people go, oh my God, I have to have this. Tom, you go first. I'm so um, scared to do this. Can I tell, <laughs> this is can not I tell my strength. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Fifth. Is that I'm so bad at this. Could I tell the Could I tell a funnier story of when I did pitch my book to an agent? Yes, you can. Okay, so let me tell the real story because I think this might be kind of interesting. So I finished the first Run and Boyle book. I was like, "This is the best thing I've ever done. I'm clearly a genius. <laughs> this is amazing. Holy cow, this is amazing!" In tears. 
in tears. I'm already in tears. I'm look, just looking in the mirror going, you are a genius guy. So I finished the book. I, I, I talked to my agents. Like I'll say this uh, at UTA. And I, I said, do, do you have a, a book person? They're like, yes, we really do. A great one. Give my manuscript to the book person. Book person comes to Los Angeles. I, I meet with a book person at the Roger Room. And the book person's uh, after... Uh, drinking most of like a $30 drink that I bought the book agent <laughs> book agent was like, I don't think I get this. I certainly don't really like it. I don't know if it's a novel. It's, it's sure not for me. And I was oh, like, Oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh no. Maybe I'm not a genius. <laughs> I guess I'll just sit here. I'm now I'm going to sit here and start crying. So the funny <laughs> thing about pitching my book is I gave it to uh, a really great book agent, read it, did not like it. Did, or wasn't, you know, didn't click. Uh, I was going to maybe throw it away because I was angry and uh, sad and then gave it uh, to um, Stephanie Rostan, who's my agent now, who represents uh, Gillian Flynn and a bunch of other people who's like, I love this book so much. This was the book I've been waiting for. So it only took one person. So watch out for agents and elevators when you pitch them something, because it almost took one person to talk me out of doing the Ronan Boyle series. Just one. Mm -hmm. person who did not it wasn't for them that book which now made the new york times bestseller list and there's three of them and there's going to be a dreamworks movie <laughs> of them one crappy person where's that book almost, person now mm -hmm. almost talked me out of it so like just be careful in elevators yeah elevator if you see an agent in the elevator just get out of the elevator as fast as you can <laughs> don't pitch them anything jump out of the elevator start running and don't look back <laughs> Okay, so okay, Melissa, now you do your pitch. Oh, yes, God. <laughs> but yours, yours, you can do yours. Yours makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. I'm so bad at this, really. Have you guys ever played? There's this board game called Pitch Storm where you're supposed to like pitch oh, no. like, things. And it's, I, it's, it literally gives me anxiety. Okay. Well, I don't want to give you anxiety. Yeah, I, I'll try it. Okay. Okay. Um, there's two girls. There's two girls. They're sisters. They've got yeah. powers. They live it, in California. It, the book's dedicated yeah. to your grandparents. I could pitch the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And one can talk to animals, which, mm -hmm. if you know, who doesn't want to? Who doesn't want to talk to the animals? And one can, like, you know, cause earthquakes. This is going so well. Yeah. It's really I'm good. Talking. There's one that's like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's, you did, right? Isn't that you? <laughs> is that one you or, is it, or the other one you? That's no, the, the other one. I, I mean, not you. Animals. Yeah. Oh, you're, but, you're the other one. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. Well, see, and then that's when you just fan yourself with a bunch of dollar bills and go, oh, it's hot. <laughs> like this? Yeah, something like that. Wait, a bunch of dollar bills from writing books? Yeah. Well, from, yeah, from your other job. Yeah, yeah, this is true. Mm, okay. I, mean, I have no wall deck. Is that a part of the pitch to be like? Okay, check back, check back in with me about that later, but okay. <laughs> I'll report back. Okay, report back to me. <laughs> okay, well, um, those were both awesome pitches. I will absolutely buy both your books. Oh wait, I I didn't even do mine. Okay, mine's about oh, uh, a kid it. who gets a kid from Galway uh, who has a ton of social anxiety gets recruited for us the secret uh, police of the Irish fairy folk. That's awesome. And, uh, that's it. It's, special, it's, it's called a special unit of Tierna Nog. It's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you don't pitch it. Up. Very nice. Awesome. Okay. Well, that is it for me. Um, <laughs> Melissa is go off and open heart surgery because, mm -hmm. I, in addition to her other roles, I'm sure she's also a cardiologist. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> you have a few minutes to get out of here before the good humor man comes. I hear mm -hmm. he's trying to ch take his image. Mm -hmm. Um, but thank you again to New York Comic Con for having us and thank you wonderful viewers and book buyers, hint, hint, for hanging out with us. Don't forget, Haven's Secret will be published on October 26th and Ronan Boyle Into the Strange Place will be published on November 16th. You can find these books along with my Supergirl trilogy wherever books are sold. Bye everyone. <laughs>